Today we're going to discuss how to use second derivatives in finding maximum and minimum values of functions. Let's get started. Here's the second derivative test for relative or local extrema. Before we discuss these two cases here, recall that the only candidates that could give us relative minimum or relative maximum are the critical numbers of f. And when we say critical numbers, these are the elements of your domain where the derivative is zero or does not exist. But if you're going to apply the second derivative test, there will be restriction. We don't consider all critical numbers of f. We only consider the critical numbers where the derivative is equal to zero. And what does that mean? It means that we're considering only critical numbers where the tangent line is a horizontal tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero. Now let's look at this uh, first case here. So first case, we have a horizontal tangent line at C. And then second condition is that the second derivative at C is negative. It is less than zero. And what does the second derivative tell us about the function f? If the second derivative is less than zero, then that means that the graph is concave downward at C, f at C. So at x equals c. So at x equals c, the graph is concave downward. So therefore, it is clear that we have a relative maximum value at x equals c. So our conclusion is that the function f has a relative or local maximum value at c. Second case, again, we have a horizontal tangent line at x equals c. So we have here horizontal tangent line and second condition the second derivative at c is positive and again in terms of concavity it means that the graph is concave up at that point so therefore we have a graph that looks something like this it is concave up at x equals c and clearly we have a relative minimum at c so therefore our conclusion the function has a relative or local minimum at x equals c. Now, before we give examples uh, on how to apply the second derivative test in finding relative extrema, let us first discuss the cases where we cannot use the second derivative test. So here are the cases when we can't use the second derivative test. First case, when the first derivative and second derivative are both equal to zero. So in this case, the second derivative is inconclusive. And second case, even if the derivative is equal to zero, when the second derivative does not exist, then again, we cannot apply the second derivative test. And lastly, since we require that the first derivative must be equal to zero, we cannot use the second derivative test when the first derivative does not exist. So how do we find the local extrema of the function in each of these uh, cases? So in any of these cases, we use the first derivative test to determine the local extrema of the function f. Now, here are the three steps in finding the local extrema of a function f using the second derivative test. First, we solve this equation. First derivative is equal to zero. Second, we find the second derivative and we evaluate it at each solution found in step one. Last step, we use the second derivative test to determine whether the function f has a local minimum or local maximum at each solution of this equation. Let's have some examples. First example, let's find the local extrema of this function here and also determine the x values at which they occur. Here, we're going to use the second derivative test to find this local extrema. So we follow these three steps in finding the local extrema using the second derivative test. First step, 
So let's solve the equation f prime of x equal to 0. So we have to find the derivative of this function and its derivative is equal to 3 times 5x raised to 4, so that is equal to 15x raised to 4, and then minus 5 times 3x squared, which is equal to minus 15x squared. Now, we can easily find the zeros of this function if we factor out this expression. So we factor out first the GCF, which is 15x squared, and we have here times x squared minus 1. And since this is a difference of two squares, the factors will be x minus 1 times x plus 1. So this derivative is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. When this factor is equal to 0, which means that x is equal to 1. Or when x plus 1 is equal to 0. So that is when x equals negative 1. Second step, we find the second derivative and evaluate it at each solution found in step 1. So we want to find the second derivative and evaluate it at each of these x values. So what is the second derivative here? If you compute the second derivative, don't use this product here and use product rule. It's easier to use this expression to compute for the second derivative. So using this expression here, we'll get the second derivative, which is equal to, we'll get here 15 times 4x cubed, which is equal to 60x cubed, and then minus 15 times 2x, which is equal to 30x. Now, we determine the sign of the second derivative at each of these x values. So for x equals negative 1, f double prime is equal to plug in the negative 1 here, negative 1 here, you'll get there negative 60 plus 30. So that is negative 30. So it is negative. You don't have to compute for the exact value of the second derivative. All you need to determine is the sign of the second derivative. So in this case, we know it is negative. Now, when we plug in 1, so it is clear from here, 60 minus 30, that is a positive number. So we'll get here a positive second derivative. And when x is equal to 0, we'll get here 0 minus 0. So that is equal to 0. Now, we interpret again the second derivative in terms of concavity. So negative derivative means the graph is concave down at the critical number. And second derivative positive means the graph is concave up at the critical number. So therefore, it is clear from this that we have a relative maximum at x equals negative 1. And we have a relative minimum at x equals 1. So what are the relative max and relative mean? So just compute for the function value here. So when we plug in negative 1 here, we'll get f of negative 1, which is equal to 2. So this is our local maximum. And when x is equal to 1, we'll get here negative 2. So this is our local minimum. So what is our conclusion? Using the second derivative test for relative extrema, f has a relative maximum of 2 at x equals negative 1, which came from this row, and that the function f has a relative minimum of negative 2 at x equals 1. And that result came from this row. Here's the graph of our function f. So it is clear from the graph that we have a local maximum at x equals negative 1, and that local maximum is positive 2. And we have a local minimum at this point, so that is at x equals 1, and that local minimum is y equal to negative 2. So this confirms our solution to this example. Second example, so let's find the local extrema of this function here. 
using second derivative test. So again, we follow these uh, three steps here. So first step, let's find the derivative of this uh, function here and uh, solve the equation derivative equal to zero. So to find the derivative of this, we just apply quotient rule and we'll get the following. So the derivative is denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is equal to 2, and then minus numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is equal to 2x, all over the square of the denominator. And when we simplify the numerator, so we have here 4 times 2, so that is 8, and then 2x squared minus 4x squared, so that is minus 2x squared. So the derivative is equal to 0 when the numerator is equal to 0. Take note that the denominator here is always not equal to 0. And this is equal to 0 when, so we can divide both sides by 2 first, we'll get here 4 minus x squared, which can be factored to 2 minus x times 2 plus x, equal to 0. So this is equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 2. So when this is equal to 0, so that is when x equals negative 2. And when this is equal to 0, so that is when x equals 2. So now we determine whether we have a local minimum or a local maximum at each of these uh, solutions here. So we first... Uh, perform this second step here, that is to find the second derivative of this uh, function. So since the first derivative is this one and it is a quotient, we can apply again quotient rule to find the derivative of this function here and we'll get the following. So again, low d high, so it's like denominator times the derivative of this which is equal to negative 4x and then minus numerator times the derivative of this. And to find the derivative of this, you apply extended power rule. So you bring down the power, you subtract 1 from the power, times the derivative of this base, which is equal to 2x. And now, let's simplify the numerator or this uh, fraction here. So here we have a common factor between numerator and denominator, which is x squared plus 4. So we can cancel this x squared plus 4 here. And then one copy of x squared plus 4. And then one copy of x squared plus 4 in the denominator. So we'll get here 4, negative 4x times x squared. So that is negative 4x cubed. And then negative 4x times 4, negative 16x. And then you have here, this is just equal to 4x. So 4x times 8. So And then you have here minus, so that is minus 32x. And then 4x times negative 2x squared. So you'll get there negative 8x cubed. And then times negative sign. So you have there plus 8x cubed. And then we combine like terms. So this plus this, you'll get here 4x cubed. And then these two terms here is equal to negative 48x. So now we can determine already the sign of the derivative at each of these solutions, which are critical numbers of g where the derivative is equal to 0. So when x is equal to negative 2, the second derivative, so here this becomes negative 8. So that is negative 32, and then this is plus 96. So that is a positive number. So this is plus. And when x is equal to 2, so this is 8. So that is 32, and then uh, this is again 2, which is minus 96. It's a negative number. So interpretation of this second derivative, again, concavity of the graph of f. So positive derivative means that the graph of G is concave up at the critical number. And second derivative negative means that the graph is concave down at the critical number. So therefore, we have a relative mean here. 
in a relative max at x equals 2. So what are those uh, local extreme values? So let's compute for function values here. Just plug in, let's say, x equals negative 2 to your g, and you'll get here negative 1 half. And then when x is equal to 2, you'll get here 4 over 4 plus 4, so that is positive 1 half. So by applying second derivative test for local extrema, we conclude that g has a relative minimum at x equals negative 2 and that relative minimum is negative 1 half. And it has a relative maximum of positive 1 half at x equals 2. So here's the graph of our function g and it is clear that we have a local minimum of negative 1 half at x equals negative 2 and we have a local maximum 1 half at x equals positive 2. So this confirms that our solution to the second example is correct. Lastly, here are some practice problems for you. So try to find the local extrema of uh, these functions here using the second derivative test. And if you'd like me to check your answers, please write your answers in the comments section below.